My dear brothers and sisters, this has been a historic and blessed day. As I have witnessed the inspired manner in which President Gordon B. Hinckley fulfilled his calling as a counselor to President Spencer W. Kimball, then Ezra Taft Benson, and then finally to Howard W. Hunter, during their periods of, of declining health, I rejoice with you in sustaining him as God's anointed prophet. With all of the inspiration and love that I possess, I testify that Gordon B. Hinckley was foreordained to become the president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, to be the mouthpiece of God on the earth at this time, and to lead God's people as prophet, seer, and revelator. President Hinckley's calling Thomas S. Monson to continue in his effective administration in the First Presidency now as First Counselor, and James E. Faust's call as Second Counselor is inspired. President Monson has demonstrated an unusual ability and uh, to lead and inspire others, whether members of this church or other non-church organizations, in their desire to serve the Master. As a newly called assistant to the Council of the Twelve Apostles 25 years ago, my assignments were chaired by then Elder Thomas S. Monson. He was my kind but effective teacher, schooling me in, the, in a more clear understanding of the worldwide mission of the Church and the duties and blessings available to a newly called servant of God. He was most effective and kind to me. President James E. Faust has impressed me not only with his abilities, experience, and knowledge of this divine work, but as a valued friend and advisor sitting next to me in our council meetings for these many years. He is gifted with an, an abundance of wisdom and uncommon spiritual direction and discernment that will be a blessing to the Church. These words of the prophet Alma are most appropriate at this time, and this is the manner in which they were ordained, being called and prepared from the foundations of the world according to the, to, uh, the fore, foreknowledge of God and on account of their exceeding, exceeding faith and good works. Therefore, they having, having been chosen of God and exercising exceedingly great faith are called with a holy calling." Close quote. The prophet Joseph Smith taught, every man who has a calling to minister to the inhabitants of the world was ordained to, the, to that very purpose in the grand council of heaven before the world was. The prophet Joseph continued, I suppose I was ordained to this very office in that grand, grand council." Close quote. President Gordon B. Hinckley uh, now wears the mantle given to the prophet Joseph Smith. He was foreordained to this calling in, in pre-mortal councils. Those of us who sit at the feet of President Hinckley, President Monson, and President Faust marvel at their wisdom, understanding, and protection of sacred matters. God's hand directs this work. He prepares His servants. He knows their hearts. He knows the end from the beginning 
and raises up those servants who will carry on his designs. These are able, humble leaders called by God to preside over his earthly kingdom in these last days. They are true and faithful servants, tested and refined by extreme circumstances. They are teachers and preachers of righteousness, examples to the world of goodness and obedience to God's commandments. We all would do well for ourselves and our posterity to heed their counsel. An early apostle, Elder Orson Hyde, said, It is invariably the case that when an individual is ordained and appointed to lead the people, he has passed through tribulations and trials and has proven himself before God and before his people. And he is worthy of the position to which he has been called and which he holds. Continuing, he said, someone that, uh, he is someone that understands the spirit and the counsel of the, of the Almighty. He is the, he is the one that will lead the church, end of quote. No man better understands the church, uh, nor is better known to the members of the church at this time than President Gordon B. Hinckley. On April the 6th, 1830, the date of the organization of Christ's church here upon the earth, 165 years ago this week, Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery were sustained as the presiding officers of the church. Called of God, Joseph was designated by revelation to be a seer, translator, prophet, and an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God the Father and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord instructed the small group of faithful saints Wherefore, meaning the church, thou shalt give heed unto all of his words and commandments, which he shall give unto you as he receiveth them, walking in all holiness before me, for his words he, sh he shall receive as if from mine own mouth, in all patience and in all faith. Him have I inspired to move the cause of Zion in mighty power for good, and is diligent I know, and his prayers I have heard." Close quote. This revelation given to the prophet Joseph is relevant for each prophet and president of the church, as well as the members of the church for all of us to heed. I testify that President Gordon B. Hinckley has been carefully prepared for this divine calling from before the foundations of the earth. That is so in heavenly councils. He was born into a family of faith, devoted people devoted to the precious truths of salvation as contained in the Holy Scriptures and the revelations received by the prophet Joseph Smith. His parents set lofty and lofty examples and taught him how to work and to finish a task, which inspired him to attain a good education and a desire to serve mankind. He accepted the challenges of missionary work and, uh, and uh, gained that blessing of sharing the gospel with others when called as a missionary to England. New talents were developed as he assisted his mission president in London in developing church publicity for the media and for the members of the church and for the world. That interest has continued throughout his years and continue on until this, and of course, including this present day. His responsibilities in the church 
in the missionary program added new methods and opportunities to proclaim the gospel, its principles, and he was instrumental in expanding the missionary work, particularly throughout the vast teeming Orient in the most remarkable way. He has participated in the dedication and rededication of more temples than any other presiding officer in the church. That is not only indicative of his love for temple work, but reflects the necessity for us to be actively involved in the work of redeeming our deceased ancestors. President Hinckley's marriage to his sweetheart, Marjorie Pay, added spiritual strength and increased desire to advance our Lord's work. She has been a most inspiring companion for nearly 58 years. President Hinckley is not only a, a man for all seasons, but for all the world. He has usually been our spokesman in meeting representatives of governments and major worldwide organizations who come to pay their respects and honor to the church. At a recent civic dinner honoring President Hinckley, the Master of Ceremonies said of him, it is understandable that members of the church worldwide always express their affection for you. In speaking to President Hinckley, all of us here hope the honor and the tribute and the love expressed this evening from those uh, of diverse churches and creeds will imbue you and yours with a special fond memory to help comfort and inspire you for a lifetime." End of quote. The brief but inspired administration of President Howard W. Hunter has come to a close. He loved the Lord and His work. and we know that the Lord loved him. President Hunter taught us how to be more gentle, kinder, and more caring, and more worthy of our pursuit to become more Christ-like. But we now begin a new era of church ad administration under President Gordon B. Hinckley, beloved by all our 15th president since the restoration of the church in 1830. In the, in the prescribed manner, we have accepted and sustained him. And through him, as has been done, and sustained him, as has been done by other prophets of old. Revelation will be made available to us through him to meet the challenges of a modern society and advance the mission of the church throughout the world. And those revelations will be made available as appropriate as we have seen demonstrated here this day by the calling of Henry B. Eyring to be a member of the Quorum of the Twelve to be an apostle of our Lord Jesus Christ. This work is true. It will move forward to carry out all the divine plans of our Heavenly Father. I bear you this witness on this sacred day in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.